we're back. It's Popcast Deluxe, youtube.com slash Popcast. John and Joe. John, Joe, Joe. John. Uh, we're back. We were just talking about all things Taylor. I feel like we maybe only got to like one third of what we could have gotten to, but there'll be more regular Popcast. We'll have a full, full Taylor episode and regular Popcast coming soon. Um, we're going to go right to songs of the week. It's song. It's a song is loosely the loose phrase this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, as with our new format, which we've talked about last week, first we're going to go over a big a big song that we're both going to talk about, and then we're both going to give a recommendation afterwards. Um, tell us about this week's big song, big intrusion. Thursday night going into Friday. Everyone's waiting for the Taylor Swift album. And can Drake, I just say also how cleansing it was to actually not listen to the Taylor album at midnight? Oh, yeah. I woke up to this Friday morning. Yeah, I, was, I went yeah, to sleep. Like, I, I was awake, but I was also just <laughs> like, I'm like, what if I just don't? I looked yeah. at Twitter a little bit and I was like, I don't want to be a part of this. I slept. I woke up, listened to around 11 a.m. It was very healing. I recommend it for everybody. Uh, yeah, I don't think we should all be consuming albums the moment they come out on our laptops, uh, and then immediately issuing an edict about whether it's classic or trash. Unless you're Tom B, in which case yeah, you're welcome to do uh, that. Tom Bryan's Taylor Swift yeah. review. You're allowed. Solid. Uh, yes. Off, off the dome. Um, Drake tweeted... Drake tweeted. Taylor made freestyle. He didn't know the baby West Coast victory, man. Call him a bitch for me. Talk about him liking young girls. That's a gift for me. Heard it on the button podcast. It's gotta be true. They told me to spare it on my belly. For my next book <laughs> called Drake Tweeted. <laughs> Drake put out a song on Twitter and Instagram, I guess. Mostly on Twitter. I think it was on Twitter, yep. Real early 2010s energy. Real old Drake uh, thirsting after Kat Dennings and Aubrey Plaza energy. Wow. Um, Drake <laughs> continues his, how would you say, uh, baiting, his needling, his trolling. Needling, for sure. Of Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. And you press play. On this song, and the first voice you hear is none other than Tupac Shakur. Rest may, in peace. May he rest in peace. Uh, Tupac Shakur chiding Kendrick for letting the West Coast down. Yeah. Um, what you hear on this song, so this is their three verses. They are a, uh, a Tupac verse, a Snoop verse, and a Drake verse, all performed by Drake, the first two with AI vocal filters. Yep. Uh, some would say all three flows are Drake flows. I don't. I don't totally subscribe to that. Though there are moments when you can. There hear are Drake. moments, but like I think he does a pretty good job of, except where he's like doing like a little bit of triplet stuff in the Tupac verse. Uh, he Tupac always used um, blank space really well, like inhales and exhales yep. and like kind of like ah and pausing. Drake does a pretty good job of that and like. The kind of like slow and steady creep of a Snoop verse. Mm -hmm. Like, I think he kind of like, he kind of approaches it. Yeah. I mean, Drake is nothing if not a student, a fan, yes. and a mimic. He's Absolutely. good at all of those things. Like, it's funny. You're like, you're not beating the fan, you're not beating the number one fan allegations <laughs> by, do, by doing a diss track in the voice of Tupac Shakur and in the voice of Snoop Dogg. Like, you're not beating the number one fan allegations, but that's fine. Like, because you're Drake and you, it's, it's and literally it's okay. what makes you good. Yes. And it's like, I understand, like, in the other records, you're like, I could never be anybody's number one fan with love. It's okay. Being a fan is fine. It also makes you a better rapper. Um, so there are these three verses. Also, the thing that I most like about this, we'll talk about the AI and the, the sort of politics of it, is he really, on his verse, he really is in his, like, 2013 flow. Like, yeah. he's, it's really old Drake. Mm -hmm. It's really, like, childish Drake, in yeah. a way. It's not um, big mafia boss Drake. Yeah. It feels like... Well, he's in fact he's calling Taylor the big mafia yes. boss. <laughs> it's like testy Drake. It's like kind of like still like fighting for his stripes, Drake. Mm -hmm. That's the energy of that last verse. And the whole verse is daring Kendrick Lamar. It's like it's like half a back to back, right? It's like yes. it's not. It doesn't have the impact of him dropping two consecutive Meek Mill disses in a row. Mm -hmm. But he's basically like, remember when I did that? Like Kendrick, like where are you? Mm -hmm. And why are you waiting for Taylor Swift to drop her album? 
And also, like, literally him saying, like, I know you're in that apartment in New York uh, working on the quintuple on <laughs> Doing, that doing I can't lyrical understand. gymnastics. Yeah, that, like, I can't understand. I better not be yeah. able to understand it. So, as a song, sure. this is... It's, Billy Woods on the track. It's a thin... It's thin as a song. As an yeah. idea, as a troll... I think it's funny. Like, did you laugh when you heard it? Did I you did laugh, laugh when you heard it? I did Once laugh. you realize what was going yeah, on. Yeah, and it's like we talked about this a little bit in the prior segment about Taylor, where it's like people are organized against Taylor lyrics or pro Taylor lyrics. Not so much like, is it good? But more like, is it Taylor? Or right. do I hate Taylor? This is, I thought, another interesting litmus test, right? Like, as you see, there's the... This is wash. This is a rinsed idea. This is terrible. Or this is blasphemous. Right. How you dare he? Right. You see that, but then you also see the ah, who's a genius more than Drake? Right. For coming up with this novel approach to battle rapping. Yeah. I will say there's layers. As with a lot of things mm-hmm. that Drake does, the fact that so much of this Kendrick beef has turned on the question of is it is AI it or not? Yes. You know, the initial leak of drake's diss track the first version everyone was like is it ai is mm-hmm. it ai and, and then, then he cleaned up his own version cleans out yep. his own version puts up puts out the official version of push-ups uh the kendrick lamar leaked response which was revealed in between our last episode and now, yes. and now to have been i would say one of the better uses of an ai vocal filter that i've ever heard i sound before the ai let them do it to they self. Self inflict the career wounds that fear helped. Drop nukes, surprise moves, hide and respect. They promised me my death. Now they deleted threats. This how it sound on the AI version. Let them do it to they self. Self inflict the career wounds that fear helped. Drop nukes, surprise moves, hide and respect. The guy, you know, you could hear some seams, but the guy, Sai the rapper, I believe yeah. was his name. Mm-hmm plausibly mimicked Kendrick in the writing of the song and in the delivery, he makes the point of the way Kendrick like lands his T's. The em- yeah, the emphases. Uh, yeah. And then came out to say, I faked this, but a lot of people, including members of Drake's team, mm-hmm. were saying, no, no, this is real. Like, drop it, drop it, drop right. it, using, you know, as part of this taunting. And then the third, uh, the third one is the Kanye remix of Like That, which had been rumored for a week or two and people who had the leak saying i actually have no idea if, if this is ai not. or not right down on the bottom 500 up at the top titanium grill caught a smile on the rock i didn't had everything that you're able to get i ain't been a drill too i ain't gonna lie it was chopped hey another one volume one then it's two and three vultures on repeat but was not kanye put it out over the weekend uh, it was then deleted from his YouTube channel. Is that true? Yeah. The the real giveaway that it's a real Kanye remix of the track where Kendrick first disses Drake mm-hmm. uh, is that he added some spooky chords to, to I would say, ruin to the number one song in the country. <laughs> um, like, totally unnecessary. And then he <laughs> you're shouts he, out. I, you're saying he... I. Uh, <laughs> he like Chief Keef Young Chop. I was gonna uh, say don't then, liked it. then he yeah. shouts out the other time when he famously yeah. ruined a song by yeah. remixing it. Yeah. Uh and he says he invented drill with Young says, Chop. Yes. <laughs> well then he, so he takes it back, sort of. He like kind of throws, <laughs> yeah. takes it back, goes back. So the uh, fact that Drake is basically like, okay, if this beef is gonna be about AI, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a practical joke with it. Yes. While but- also daring Kendrick to come at him. Okay. To you- me makes it land. In a way that's like what this beef will this will be remembered as the great AI beef of 2020. What do you make of the Galaxy Brain take that Drake is sort of carrying water for Lucian, who's invested in a lot of AI technology and how AI might ultimately be used in music making? And this is essentially softening up the public for getting acclimated to popular musicians doing AI, like the Luke Combs cover of Tracy Chapman. <laughs> Uh, the last part's a joke. You're talking about, or is it? You're talking about Lucian Grange, yes. uh, chairman of Universal Music Group, yes. uh, home to most major label pop stars, yes, including right. Drake and Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. Um, and like most people involved right. in this beef. There's a big, very good John Seabrook story in The New Yorker yes. about Universal's investment in AI technology, uh, if you want to go deep on that subject. Um, but I think 
Drake does what he wants. Drake's deal with Republic is a licensing deal. Mm-hmm. Drake, I don't think, uh, despite what Kanye uh, might have you think. No, no, no. I don't believe him to be in the pocket of the label in that way. I agree. I, I'm, it's more like him having access to certain levels of technology or certain like. Oh, like, you think this is like a beta use of the Tupac and Snoop vocal filter that then might be licensed out for popular use? Yes. It's an interesting. It's an interesting idea. I mean, if anyone was going to grease the wheels for this technology, it would be Drake. But I think it's already happening. We're you know a year deep on this. We're a year since "Hard on My Sleeve," the mm-hmm. big weekend Drake track that sort of set off the AI vocal filters craze. Didn't Ghost Rider put out a song the last week or something? Yeah, we played it in an episode. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's it's quiet because now everyone's doing yeah. it. It's no longer mm-hmm. as surprising, which is why I think Drake who, as we know, is very online. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he could have gotten here with or without it, but I do think, whether it's on purpose or not, it helps to normalize the idea that we're going to have not only amateurs making songs yep. in recognizable voices, but potentially famous people as well. Does it hit? Is it, a, is it an actual successful blow struck in the battle? No, I think it's I think it's a successful joke. And I think I don't think Drake meant it as anything more than a taunt. And I think that as a as a meme, it works as a song. You know, it's not it's not playable on a streaming service. And I think that that's intentional. Yeah. I mean, what I will say is it's memorable. Like this is the thing. Like what do you when you think back, you said this is gonna be the AI beef. It's memorable. Drake is extremely good at being memorable in these settings. Yeah. Like understanding, like, what is the novel tweak that I can bring to whatever the circumstances like is? Like playing the memes done. in the background of OVO Fest when which, he's which beefing was with I Meek saw Mill. in person. Right. And I was like, which, which, which is, at the time it was unbelievable. I mean, yeah. literally, I was in Toronto there watching him, watching him put Meek Mill memes that were just on Twitter. Yeah. Three days prior and being like, you took that meme. I mean, this sounds like old hat now, but I mean, at that yeah. time, it was absolutely unthinkable that that could happen. It was the it was the summer jam screen. It was as potent as Jay putting the prodigy photos on the summer jam screen. It, it was so shocking. And you're like, unbelievable. He's moving at the speed of the Internet mm-hmm. and he's still moving at the speed of the Internet. Yeah. Um, so it's successful in that way. Um it also plays into again him being a fan. Right. Fandom is people love to rap. How do you learn to rap? You learn to rap by emulating other rappers yeah. and then figuring out your innovation. This is like him exposing some piece of himself. I wonder if he told Snoop first. Well, Snoop did the reaction shot right. where he he didn't really come down one way or right. the other. Right. But but it's like I Probably not, would be yeah. my guess. Yeah. Certainly didn't clear with the Tupac estate, I'm yeah. sure. But um, I, I don't know. I think it's effective because it takes the battle out of a kind of like lyrical battle. Mm-hmm. And again, him like sort of like. It makes it strategic. Exactly. And, and him kind of being dismissive of Kendrick's talent, being like, oh, you, they're gymnastics and the quintuple entendres. It's him basically saying like the thing that you are trying to do. Is not how you win a beef in twenty twenty four. It's useless. Yeah. Like you're literally like scratching things out on a notepad and like doing like rhymes like A B A B C B. Whereas A-B. I'm calling you little Marco, basically. Yeah. Yes, and and I think it's such a elegant is not the right word, but it, what it does is it absolutely reframes the idea of what this battle is about and how it should be kind of like executed and i i frankly don't know if anybody on the other side has the i don't know what pg lang is capable of in terms of you know theatricality i guess we'll find out yeah that's the other thing i think this looks different in the middle than it does when the other shoe drops if the other shoe drops i think drake is coming across as very confident yes like he he's ready for the next round Mm -hmm. and We've seen him in this place before. Didn't work out that way. You know, maybe he feels like there's not a, another child. Right. <laughs> so he's, he's good. But, like, right. I think how and when Kendrick responds, like, we'll see if this was hubris 
or not. Yeah, but it's also but on a fundamental level, it's changing the terms of the of the debate and saying, "Ah, you thought you were going to win by out rapping me." Yeah, that's actually off the table now. You're you have to out conceptualize me. You have to out creative direct me. You have to out technologize me. And I don't know. I just simply don't know if that's the battle that Kendrick is showing up for. I have some other rap if you want to listen to another rap song. I'd love to hear. Uh, Since we talked so much about Taylor in this episode, I thought, you know, my song of the week would just be some old fashioned rapping. Great. Uh, Mozzie. Look at Mozzie. Sacramento rapper. Phenomenal. One of the most consistent rappers of the last. Handful of years. Who signed Mozzie? Uh, Interscope? Inter- no, but didn't he have, wasn't it like a... Oh, he's on CMG. CMG, yeah, right. With Yo Gotti. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is his first album since he did, I believe, like a year in prison um, on a weapons charge, sort of in the middle of, you know, what had been a, a pretty productive and successful rise mm-hmm. uh, with bumps along the way. But he put out a new album on Friday called Children of the Slums. Uh, and with it came, a, as all new releases do, uh, a From the Block performance um, of a song called Still Hurt on here. And it's just what Mozzie does. It's, yeah, dangling microphone, West Coast lyrics, both tough and vulnerable mm-hmm. at the same time, very nimble flow. Really good rapper. Really good rapper, um, magnetic presence, good performer. Um, and it's just a really, a really solid album that I'm enjoying a lot. Pedicure, I gotta keep you clean. Automobile 2023, give me 20 C. I don't want you nerds around the thugs. Suckers know the purpose of these drums. Walk through committee, why you think he on the run? Got him a B&B, dropped him off, he in the tuck. Terrorized them all and buy anything she touched. She sold her booty for it, you can't tell me that it's tricking. Okay, so on my year-end list last year, I put some wild cards in there. One of the folks I put in there was uh, an electronic music producer named Odatari from Houston. Um, I'm sure someone's come up with a genre name for this. I don't know what it is. Hard wave? Like, I don't know. It's You're like, just coining that off. Yeah, right, sure. Why right not? Now? Yeah. Hard wave. Okay, run with that. Enjoy yeah. it. <clears throat> Hashtag it. Um, Odatari's music. Uh, sort of veers between abrasive and tuneful, but does a pretty good job of not sacrificing one too much for the other. But it is like really like it is harsh music that let's say two times out of three has like woven through delicacy. And um, Odatari had maybe like two or three songs last year that I really, really thought were great. Um, And he has a new song that came out on Friday uh, it's called Break a Neck, and it's with Aisha Erotica. And Aisha Erotica uh, has been popular in various social media platforms at various times in the last few years. Uh, had kind of a unexpected TikTok moment last year. There's a song of hers called Yummy, which got remixed uh, and became the soundtrack for the Tube Girl videos. I don't know if you saw those. Not to be confused with Justin Bieber's Yummy. No, very different. <laughs> um, I am unfortunately not wearing my Juicy Couture sweatsuit today. Uh, but let's let's play a bit of the Tube Girl video. And if you're on TikTok, you'll know this song. So Aisha Erotica kind of had this moment, but... I'm always like, I need more. Like, I need more. I want more. I, I, I want there to be, like, an organized movement. This song with Odatari, I'm like, oh, is this the first step? Not simply of, like, a beautiful Odatari song, but also maybe, like, the slow mainstreaming of Aisha, Aisha Erotica. Like, could happen. So let's listen to Break a Neck. I can make you break your neck. 